Thank you for camera. joining us for this amazing stream of, of uh, silent movie edition Dungeons and Dragons. Um, yeah, awesome. Like, we're running a little behind schedule, so what do y'all say? We just jump into it. We've got that bronze girl over there, Britt Wiseman, uh, Jeff in Control TV, and Jesse Cox playing, respectively, Aya, uh, wait, yeah, uh, Aya, not, not Enki, in fact, and Kara Armeros, uh, Armeros and Sarek Bashar. So um, what happened last time? Do y'all remember? Someone quickly summarized for One me. One quick correction, Cena. That's all good. But can you please refer to me as not day nine? If you could just. As not day nine. Okay, so we've got, we've got Ankara, Aya, Sarek Bashar, and not day nine. Uh, good. All right, Jeff, what did we do last time? Uh, yeah, so it was a really great episode. The ladies tried to have a threesome. Uh, me and Jesse... That was Armorosa's perspective. Right. We were more concerned with trying to find a shiny thing at the base of a mountain. Uh, I then scaled that, saved the day, I believe. And uh, is, that, is that what happened? That is what happened. Yeah. Sounds legit. Uh... It's pretty accurate. Uh, so y'all be... now stand uh, in this this... A uh, medium-sized room up between these twin towers. Directly below your feet is the large double door that was locked that leads to the drawbridge, which stretches out across the way. From your current position, Aya and Ankara, you're both standing by the windows. You can look down upon the drawbridge and see in front of you. Let's see what you see. Um, yeah, uh, uh, in the center of this room, there is a table with two chairs. Um, there used to be food on the table. I think someone grabbed some of that food or no, maybe it was, maybe it was not. Um, uh, there was a pile of refuse in a back corner that turned out to be a guard who had tried to attack and uh, stabbed Aya at the back. Um, the wall behind you is solid stone, but the wall you're facing has three narrow arched windows, uh, arrow slits. Looking down on a drawbridge below, um, in the distance, you can see uh, walls of yellow cut stone with crenellations on top. You see it every once in a while, some heavy movement on the top of the walls. Um, you know, some large lizard shaped head and the thick, heavy um, wings. And then down below, you see um, a drawbridge. There are bodies down in the crevasse below the drawbridge. And on the other side, three guards stand with weapons at the ready. All three of them have the signature um, pools of blackness in their eyes that you remember seeing in the guard who attacked you uh, in Kara. So from left to right, there is um, a, uh, a man with thick black angular face tattoos, and he's wielding two short swords. In the center, uh, there is um, a man with a gray top knot tied back at the top of his head. Um, he's wielding a long sword and a shield. And on the right, uh, there is a short woman who uh, does not wield a shield. She holds only a spear in two hands. Now, uh, the four of you just took a long rest. And if oh. I look at your hit points, Aya and Kara, how many HP do you currently have? I ha oh, I think I, I was knocked down, so I think I have one. You have did you get back up again, though? I did. Yeah. It's a tough you know, you're gonna keep You know you're never going to keep me down. <laughs> That's it. That's the song. That's the one I was going for, so. Yeah. yeah. I was picking up what you were putting down. Thank you. And, and Kara, I don't think you got knocked down, but you're also at one, right? So given that you just took a short rest, would either or both of you like to spend hit dice to recover hit points? Yes. Now, before we do that real quick, there's a special rule about food. If you share rations over a short rest, anybody who spent hit dice to heal can re-roll the amount that they healed and take the better of the two rolls. Okay. okay. So, so, as an option, feel free to um, either just go ahead and spend hit dice or declare that you're taking rations out of your pack and uh, healing up for- a, What a is happening? My what coffee kind of just spilled all over me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was like, is he really this uh, disturbed by this About rations? <laughs> I was going to say, like... <laughs> it's okay! I'm just keep... Let's keep going! This is really your day, man. <laughs> we'll do it live. Uh, I'll... Sh yeah, let's share some... I'm going to share some rations. Keep it together, Jesse. Jeez Louise. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, no. Uh, does anyone have rations? I don't think I have any. So let's see. Are you asking or are you just... Yeah, in character. In character, please. Yeah. And Kara, you have an explorer's kit, right? Yeah. So your explorer's two kit has two uses, and in that explorer's kit, you can pull out any of these eight items down here, including rations to share. So you could spend one use of your explorer's kit and pull out rations. I actually okay. only have eight pieces of chalk, unfortunately, so. Let's do that. Yeah. Why do you have so much chalk? <laughs> I say this in character. <laughs> Uh, Armoros, why do you carry so much no, I... with you? <laughs> <laughs> I just immediately saw that. Sorry. That's not canon. He does not have eight pieces of chalk. Does he eat it? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, it was such a good uh, like thing. He's just like, I like chalk. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, yeah uh, I'll, I'll, I'll spend a ration. Sweet. Cool. Share some rations. So you can knock that explorer's kit down to one. You and and Kara or and Aya can share rations. Like what what food did you bring with you? What do you bring out of your backpack? Oh, um, a loaf of bread mm -hmm. and goat cheese. Mm -hmm. What? And wine. Nice. And mandarin oranges. Damn, fancy. And it's like and avocado toast. Strangely enough. Uh, can I have some like popsicles that never melt? That they were. Like, uh, you know what? It? I figure when you pack your rations, you pack them well enough that they're you know preserved for the it's duration. It's in a cooler. So, yeah. Yeah. You pull out oh, you popsicles. brought like one of those coolers with yeah. you? Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. They have Thank you, food. yeah. They actually remind me that I have the stolen cheese. My reward for saving um, the zombie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that's that's that. where the. I got a magical cooling pack from a wizard I ran into a long time ago. So I mm -hmm. bring out all of that. So if you ask for rations, Armoros kind of looks sadly down at his like brick of cheese that he's holding. He like, breaks off a piece of it and says, Jerry is important. It's, it's a literal brick <laughs> of cheese. And we have goat cheese too. We have all variety of cheeses. Trust not the cheese of a goat. This is made by the hands of man and woman. As opposed what? to made by a goat. Is that human cheese? Yes, this was harvested and made by people. Cheese made from a goat. Can't trust them. Cool. Well, <laughs> I'm going to eat goat cheese. <laughs> That's why I, I never drink cow's milk. Some bread and goat cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I right. give Aya bread, goat cheese, anything she wants. I just open the bag and offer it to her mm. load her up all right yeah. would both of you roll your uh hit dice twice and take the better of the two results mine is pretty good 10 nice <laughs> oh <laughs> a double seven yeah 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 basically but you still roll a seven. That's not All right, fantastic. Oh. So uh, both of you can go ahead and correct your hit points. Um, Aya back up, to, or Ankara back up to 10 and Aya uh, back up to eight. Fantastic. Okay, so yeah, the situation is you're looking down on this drawbridge. There's three folks down at the other end, brandishing weapons. They're, they're dead eyes burning and staring across the bridge. What do you do? And we see him, obviously. We're just looking across at him. Yeah, you can, you can look out the windows, see them easily. Beyond them, you see the gate through the barbican that leads through the walls of the palace compound so yeah this is definitely the way to go to and they the they appear to be and look very much like the one we just murdered yeah so once again like um the the woman that you bargained with in order to get in here um she looked completely normal but the one that you uh, were attacked by in here his skin was completely burned. Her skin, her skin, Hala. Her skin was completely burned and then healed, and also her eyes were pools of black darkness, just like shadow pooling in her eye sockets. And um, we, you couldn't them. we have keys, yes? Yes. yes. Armor has grabbed the keys from um, uh, Elisavet. Uh, I did. Excuse me. Oh, uh, oh sorry. Me. Sarek turns to everyone and looks across the bridge and then points to the tower, the other tower next to them. Uh, and it's like, 
before before we cross, perhaps we should investigate this other structure. Are you talking about like so like you're in the middle room, suspended between a tower on the right and a tower on the left? Yes, I'm s- the, the one that was Hala's tower, right? We haven't yeah. been there. Is there stuff in there that we can find? It's a good idea. Yeah, let's go check it out. We should do this. I agree. Okay, who's leading the way? I shall, for I have the keys. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so um, we're looking at this door on the left-hand side, because y'all came up the door on the right-hand side. Um, Would the four of you position your tokens where you are standing appropriately when the door is open? Nice. That just, that sounds ominous. It is. Um, well, I guess it's gonna I... be a trap. I think we're gonna learn the lesson of why the <clears throat> wizard should not be leading. I have the keys, <laughs> and also I am not a wizard. I'm a warlock. Uh, uh, tomato, so- tomato. Okay. Everybody clusters up next to the door, and Sark walks <laughs> out the other door down. Sark the like backs up towards the other door. As you guys go to open it, he just silently backs away. He's like, yeah, yeah, we should go look. And then backs off. Nice. I see yeah. him backing away. I'm just standing behind her. If someone can move my token, I, my roll 20 is... Oh, I don't have permit. Oh, look. I'm playing a mini permission. game right now of trying to find the tokens and also keep my information on the screen. That's not fun. Awesome. Okay, uh, so Aya, are you the one opening the door? Yes. All right, go for it. Yeah, I uh, reach forward, put yep. the key into the lock, yep. and kick open the door. Okay, the door flies open, bang! And in the other tower, you see a set of stairs spiraling down. The I poke my head in. Yeah. Is there anything else I see? Give me a perception roll. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> It's so fun how the simplest of <laughs> phrases can just evoke no, something. I'm oh, not very no, perceptive. there's definitely nothing else you can see. Right. Before Are she goes sure? further, though. Can I walk up and also do a Before perception? she goes further, I put my hand on her shoulder and say, I should leave. You are small and pathetic. Fair. Take the, take the lead. <clears throat> and I just descend the stairs, I suppose. Wait, uh, uh, Ser- Sarek, like, like, raises his finger as a point of order, and it's just like... Excuse me, the tower the tower goes down. Is that yeah? Anyone- so you know you. It's Sorry, more of a you- it's more of a lower than I suppose. You, you went up one tower to the joint between them, and that's where you are now. And then and then oh you, oh the yeah, okay so all right, you had me worried. All right. Yes. Yeah, Armoros, uh, you, you you spiral down the stairs of the tower, reach the bottom floor. There's a door in front of you. There's a bright sunlight leaking in through the cracks to the sides, top and bottom of the door. I'm going to kick that in. All right, you, you kick the door. Uh, give me a strength roll. Uh, uh, a, yeah, athletics check, I guess. Oh, that's fucking good. Yeah, you, you kick the door, it splinters and shatters outwards, exploding. Uh, and you see the, uh, the, the pathway leading away from the drawbridge. Hmm. The one that you came up into. Prison. There is nothing inside this except for more of the outside world. Can we go do battle with the dead people standing ominously across the bridge from us? Can I do a perception check to see if there's anything else besides nothing? Yeah. Yeah, I walk like down you, the stairs. I follow you him. You can do a perception check, which is just like a quick glance around, or you could do an investigation check. That oh. Would probably take 10 minutes, but it would be a very thorough investigation. I want to do an investigation. All right. Go for it. Roll that investigation check. What are you looking mm, for? Yeah, you know that, that seven minutes? Or that ten minutes, you know, uh, didn't really uh, reveal very much to you, and of course we're clicking the clock down one. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm gonna maybe... do a quick perception check if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Hmm. What's here? Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is. I a watch. Very I watch start like dig through tower. everything and not find anything, and I'm like, you know what? Let me just let me just take a quick glance. You, you see dust on the stairs, uh, some cobwebs in the rafters. There's like a crow sitting up there, like looking down at you curiously. Aww. But it's not a plot sensitive crow. It's just a, a set dressing. Yeah, I just blow a kiss to the little crow. Yeah. <laughs> as as Sarek wastes 10 minutes of your time, you all come to the conclusion that uh, 
It has nothing to do with him looking for stuff and everything to do with the fact that he doesn't want to engage with three psycho killers across yeah. a bridge. And he's just like stalling for time. Yeah. Maya yeah. calls up the stairs and says, come on, yellow belly. We've got places to be. Uh, on my way. Oh, so, oh, so interesting. Have you seen this? And he like points to a random like wall sconce. I just yeah, there's, there's a liking to... growing under those sconce. <laughs> yeah. I walk over to him and I just like put my hand like on my arm around his shoulder and I'm like, we, we gotta go. There's nothing here. I, there's so much I could be drawing though. Have you seen my walls? And he like starts to pull out his book again. That's, I, I think you have so many of those. We have to go. We have are your to walls go as there. good as your trees or are your walls as good as your people? Walls, trees, mountains. I'm a mm. landscape artist. I, people I don't do. It's all very interesting, but I do believe we should proceed. They're going to leave us behind. Let's go. I'll pr I'll do my best to protect you. That's that's very sweet. And, and he sort so of follows you. To draw. <laughs> oh, you're you're right. And he just mm -hmm. puts it away in a little pouch. They <laughs> lead us down the stairs. And you said I was weak and pathetic. No, they are certainly more weak and more pathetic. <laughs> From you, that's a compliment. Lead yeah. the way, good sir. I'm confused. All right. Yes, that's fine. He just stomps forward. I toss him the keys to the cool. gate. So, then I'm gonna hang on. We need to. Make, I need to make sure that I yeah. Like set, set the scene for me here. Are I catch it. Are y'all all downstairs? Yeah, yes. yeah. I followed him down as soon as I saw like sunlight enter the tower and that he wasn't okay. ambushed. Uh, and so um, let's see. Let me flip back over to roll twenty here. I can grab this right. Oh, that's very strange. Why is it doing that? Mm -hmm. Just want this one and not that one. Get this one back to me. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Maps. Why you be like this? We'll transition the scene. Give you, like, a little cover as you change the map. Thank you. Dear God. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. Let's see, you know, you, you're all downstairs. Go ahead and position yourselves wherever you would like to be. Um, we've got this uh, door in front of you. Let's move this guard over here. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I'm gonna move halfway across the bridge and then- Oh, so you, so you open the door. Uh, this door, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So there's, there's this-, this... Uh, Steven, I'm over opening doors. I'm going to kick it open again. It's it's a massive. But I gave you the key. Big door. Locked oak door. <laughs> you yeah, lost the key. <laughs> I do do I do I roll a natural one when attempting to knock open this gigantic door. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You uh your your entire left leg is numb from the attempt at, at kicking open this door. Armoros not the wisest of guys, but realizing that kicking it's probably not going to work. Does use the keys. He just wanted the grand entrance to be him blasting the entire door down. Okay, uh, so you, you you stick the keys in the lock, turn them, and then shut the doors open. The doors swing outwards, and immediately the three guards on the other side of the bridge let out a howl and start running across the bridge at you. Would each of you roll for initiative? Oh, boy. Click your token, then hit initiative. I don't know why I'm so afraid to die. I know it's going to Damn it. I don't want to die. Steven, I'm going to use my inspiration to reroll that. Is that okay? Is that, hey. that is totally fine. Yes, you yeah. may. 11 is a little bit better. I'll take the 11. How'd you get a six? The guards get a six, which is just terrible. Six, six, six. All right. Let's sort that. Aya, uh, it's your turn first. And of course, you're about 60 feet away from the closest guards here. Hmm. What do you do? Um, 60 feet, you say? 60 feet. That's not a problem for me. Um, seeing them howl and uh, come running towards us, uh, Aya very calmly once again draws her golden skull from her, from her left sleeve, from one of her many sleeves, and... Um, kind of like very like in a bored fashion, like, you know, flicks her fingers and sends off an Eldritch Blast. Nice. 14. Ooh, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Which one are you targeting? 
So there's a the guard the on the one left. with less armor. The, one, the guard <laughs> on the left is wielding two short swords. The guard in the <laughs> middle is wielding a sword and shield, and the guard on the right yeah. is wielding a spear. I'm gonna go with the short swords. Okay, good you call. Do hit. Roll for you. Nine force damage. Jeez, a withering blast of force just skewers this guy in the chest. Is that all you want to do, or do you want to move? Uh, no, I'm I'm not. <laughs> I'm not moving up there. No. Not going anywhere. All right, and Kara, you're a, you're it's your turn. And Sarek, you're next. What are you doing, Kara? I believe my short bow has enough range to oh, yeah. hit them from where I am. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and aim it at the short sword guard just to try and get him out of there. Let's just see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're totally uh, great in range. Yeah, so I pull up my short bow and like Shut one eye. Do you stick your tongue out like that too? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Your sh your short bow uh, clangs off of the chain mail, chain mail that this Great. guard is wearing, missing. Sarek, your turn. Armoros, you're up next. Sark sees that Inkara just sort of like looks great with this bow, just rocking it, <laughs> and thinks to himself. I could, this isn't so bad. If she can do it, I can do this. So he sort of lines up next to her and mm -hmm. does the exact same thing. Fires off nice. a shot with his bow. Nice. Oh, that 24. Roll your damage. I'm really impressed by this. What happened to my, what happened to my thing? You should be able to just, yeah, there you go. Six piercing damage, not bad. So with one fell swoop, you knock this short sword guard to the ground. Sarek looks over at Ankar and like gives her like a, like, I did something, like a, like a nod. Like, mm. I look at him and I'm like, maybe you could teach me to be better with my short bow sometime. He does not, <laughs> he's in his own world. He doesn't know or hear your comment. <laughs> Armoros, it's your turn, then the guards, then Aya. What do you do, Armoros? You may be muted, Jeff. I was muted. Steven, you said they're about 60 feet away? They're about 60 feet away. I'm going to pull out my trusty light crossbow and shoot the, you said a spear guy, right? And then a sword and yeah, shield? Yeah, a, a, a woman wielding a spear on the right-hand side of the bridge. Yep. I will try to spear the woman. Ooh, yeah, your bolt flies wide, clattering off Fearer. the side uh, of the oh, tower. Never mind. Um, are you going to move yourself, Armros? Uh, I think for my can my second action be I put the crossbow away and pull out my sword. Which yes, mm -hmm. then I'll do that. Yep, awesome. All right, so let's see what we've got here. A sword and shield guard moves, and that's going to be what? Yeah, let's see here. Um. Totally. Guard and shield guard double moves up to be right in front of Armoros, and a spear guard is going to uh, move as well. Let's see. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then Sarek, the spear guard, chucks the spear at you. So let's see. What? On the spear. What? Thank you, boy. I think you might be out of its uh, optimal range. Spear thrown 20 I would, I would hope I'm out of the optimal range of a spear throw. <laughs> this is a disadvantage attack, unfortunately. Roll, um, my life objective is to be out of the range of, of optimal spear throws. <laughs> Plus three. Well, I mean, he's only got one, though, right? So... If you dodge Ooh, yeah, this okay. one. So that's a big old 10, which I think misses you handily. <laughs> I, uh, it's your turn and following yeah. you, Kara. What do you do? Um, I'm going to I'm gonna step over here mm -hmm. and then uh, the launch an Eldritch Blast at that spear, at the, the dude who threw the spear. Hey. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show uh, Sarah how it's done. Oof, yep, you nail him. Yeah. Nine force damage again. You're rolling really well with those Eldritch Blasts. <laughs> totally. And I look over my shoulder and like... 
<laughs> I'm also impressed by Aya's skills. And now I feel that I really need to make up for my failure. And so it's I'm your turn and Kara. Sara is following you. With my short bow again. Yeah, you you know, it just bounces right off that same exact place I on the armor. I was actually looking at Sarek and Aya while I was doing it. <laughs> 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 Wanna make sure they saw that I <laughs> can do it, but I can't. Nice. Sarek, your turn. My head in shame. Yeah, uh Sarek <laughs> dodges this spear that flies right by him with complete ease. And then watches Aya just unleash a demon skull. And she like glances back at him, he's like Oh man, and then he looks over at Ankara, who misses again. And he's like, all right. And then he goes up next to Aya and fires off another shot, <laughs> trying to impress her. Yeah. Nice. Uh, 18. Trying to impress. There we go. 17 hits. What's your damage? Four damage. Puts this guard down as well. Deadliest character certainly is currently looking like uh, like Sarek Basha. Sarek mm -hmm. looks over at Aya and Ankara and then walks next to er <laughs> to Amaros and puts his hand on his shoulder. And he's like, eh, pretty easy, you'd say, right? And what do you do in response, Armoros? It's your turn, then the guards, then Aya. I'm facing this uh, spear and shield guard, right? Sword and shield, yeah, long sword. sword. Oh, sword and shield, yeah, sorry. You've done fantastically well. And I'm going to swing at the the nemesis in front of me. Nice. Ooh, all right. Yeah, you're, you strike true, catching him just over top of that shield. He couldn't bring it up fast enough. Seven I, thought, damage, huh? I, I thought on the map the sword and shield guy was just Amaros. So I thought yeah. we had That's what, won. Like, and I like went over and was like, yeah. <laughs> Keep it. It's still canonical. Just watching, just shaking my head. Yeah. Like, my body oh blocks my the God. view of this person. Probably. <laughs> it's still it's still canonical. We won. It's great. Maybe. Sorry, <laughs> thinks Maybe. the battle's over as you're fighting a guy. And he's like, "We did pretty good, old pal. We nailed it." Yeah, Armoros. Um, this this guard wielding the short and shield looks at you and then grins a rictus grin before lashing out with his sword, striking at Sarek Basha. Next to me? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Ooh, hitting you, Sarek. That's oh, what I get for having no perception. <laughs> should have should have rolled on that. What's the bonus on that? That's plus one. <laughs> your cockiness <laughs> was your downfall. Ooh, Sarek, you need a nine damage from the sword biting into your collarbone. Aya, you see this happen. What do you do in response? And Kara, you're next. <sighs> I, first of all, am, am shocked and have that thought that his cockiness was his downfall. <laughs> and, um, I'm sorry, wait a minute, hang on, I'm done. Pause. I'm like, I'm like done. I'm, he you're, got you're at zero hit points, yeah. my friend. You're, yeah. you're unconscious. Yeah. Oh, he, you are? He just blocked yes. me. Yeah. I walked up like, we did it! But <laughs> done. Done. It does make for a funny scene. <laughs> if not a very stupid one. All right, Aya, what do you do? Um, shocked, I uh, reach into um, my boot and take out a dagger and chuck it at the at the dude. Nice. Yeah, yeah. 19 hits. Five damage. Your dagger catches this guy in the throat and he goes down without a sound. He is dead. Nice. <clears throat> All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go help. Uh, yeah, Derek, kind of confused, and help him to his feet, and be like, "What were you thinking? Just well, we walking to... up to him like that?" Can we just auto stabilize him when we're out of combat? Yes. So, uh, in the ten minutes around a fight, after the fight is over, you can pick up your comrades, restore them to one hit point, and um, like stabilize everybody. So, okay. uh, it does take the full 10 minutes, like every fight does, but Armoros, or rather, sorry, you recover one hit point after the fight is over. I'm going to loot the bodies. Oh, yeah, yeah. totally. How much gold does each of them give you? Um, money. Yeah, we're over money, here. Money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. You find seven gold pieces scattered between. The I will three. give two gold to 
everyone and take one for myself. Cool. Should probably write that down. You guys know, take two gold. I, I like tuck you, it into Sarek's unconscious pocket. Sarek like is just leaning on his bow, just completely like dumbfounded that that could have gone the way it did. He's just like brushing himself off, and he's like, "Was that, was that my my blood? I don't know. Oh, gross." And he's just like not accustomed with violence. He's like, "Oh, this is not good." And he's just, like, rubbing on himself, like, wiping himself off. Just like, ugh. All of the feelings that Akara had of being impressed by Sark when he shot a short bow have now kind of disappeared. <laughs> In the future, we should wait for revelries after the battle. Sark. I... Sark just, like, hangs his head in shame. There's no... He has no words. It's an embarrassment on both his name and his house. All right. It's it's bad. They threw a spear at you when I was at the front, and then they swung at you when you were close. Do you have some relation with these things? No, I just think they think I'm I'm the leader. Which I mean, he like points to all of you, and then points to his like own slightly regal outfit. And he's like, I mean, look at me. I fit the part. Why would anyone think that you could never lead anyone? What? How have you know my family has led many people, many places, many times? But just your family, not you, correct? I'm part of my family. It's like I was there. As the two of you are maps, right? Them. Your maps have helped lead many people anywhere. He, he Why would quickly... anyone think he's the leader when we have a a bear it wrapped in human flesh with us? <laughs> He, he, Zerg just like, lo, like just looks at Aya, just like, yes. So in Kara, exactly maps. <laughs> maps lead people everywhere, and I'm very good at them. Yes, you are. Landscapes so, are your specialty. As the Thank four you. of you carry on this conversation, all of a sudden, you four are cloaked in complete darkness. Yeah, it was just born it. Just boof, gone. Blackness. Um, and as your eyes slowly adjust, you can see stars twinkling overhead and the slightly larger shards of the broken moon scattered across the heavens. It's that's beautiful. Not, that's not cool. That was weird. Uh, I mean, this means that the sun has gone out again. What? Yeah. No, that, that, that could be another explanation. We don't. We're inside the bubble. Yes. No, we're fine. Yeah, you're, fine. You're, Everything's you're fine. The the bubble. Bubble. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. It's fine. Right? It's fine. I I can't say with full confidence that it's fine, but if there's no way to tell whether it is or not because we're in the bubble, then it seems like assuming what? everything is fine is. Sarek is like panicky and like up on you. He's like, shouldn't you know? Because you're you're a druid and this is your thing, right? I I gotta tell you, the only reason I came here the sun uh, went out. Oh no! Oh god! <laughs> it's over! I came here because I've never been to a place like this. And as a world explorer, I was curious to see what it would be like. So I've never actually I've never actually dealt with something like this before. Um, I mean, we're all we're all still here, right? So Armoros yeah, looks at you it's... really, really confused and is just like kind of baffled by this conversation. He's like, the sun goes out literally every day. <laughs> Don't uh, understand the confusion. Yes, Armoros, but usually haven't you noticed that the sun goes down slowly as opposed to just turning off i assume it has somewhere to go slow fast it doesn't matter it does go down every day i think it's safe to say this is part of the reason why armoros isn't always assumed to be our leader i am just merely pointing out that upon observation someone of my stature would only be seen following this gigantic hulk of a man simple though he may be 
One cannot doubt his physical prowess and fortitude. I don't disagree with that. Clearly, somebody like me wouldn't be following this bumbling buffoon around. And I, like, kind of motion to Sarek. Sarek, like, gives you the dirtiest of glances. Just like a, all right, a, a little thought, like, Sarek will remember this, appears on the screen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. As an extremely old elf druid, I'm just very amused by the interaction of other people. <laughs> These insecure humans slash half elves just yeah. gosh. <laughs> Listen, we're all here, the light's gone. We can't turn it back on. Steven, is there any way for me to like can I check and see if I know any reason why this would happen? I mean, so y'all have all been like living in this world for long enough that you like, know we all that, know this, right? Yeah, these these periods where the sun vanishes and stops shedding light, they are occasional. Yeah, it just happens. Yep. But it's going to come back, though, right? This is it. it I mean, it, it has always in the past. has before. Yeah, it has, so we can assume that it will. It's just a subtle reminder that our mission is important, right? Something like that? I don't know. I mean, it is a reminder. I don't know if I'd call it subtle. Right. <laughs> it has all the subtlety of uh, armor us here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, since there's nothing we can do about the sun going out right now, maybe we can hope that it comes back and continue on? Right. Towards the dragon. Right. Right. Yes. All right, big guy. <clears throat> After you, good sir. Very well. Let's lead the way. All right. So, Armoros, you lead us up the path towards the Barbican, uh, away from this drawbridge. Okay. Is that is that the plan? I think so. Yeah. So, um, as as you approach the Barbican, it's it's very dark. Uh, those of you who have dark vision, who I believe is is just uh, Ankara, right? Oh, I have it as well. Ah, okay. So have elves. Yeah, totally. Those of you who have dark vision can see as if it was dim light, but it's all black and white. Um, you're approaching this, uh, this large, um, uh, like structure set into the walls of the palace compound. The path uh, goes through it and then exits out on the other side of the Barbican um, towards where you can see uh, like dim fires flickering into existence. And those of you who don't have dark vision can also see like the warm glow of firelight, you know, 300, 400 feet away, um, obscured by heavy dark shapes that you can't, um, you can't particularly see well in, in this darkness. Even those of you with dark vision can't particularly see well. Um, uh, immediately, this this path leads on an approach to, and then underneath this heavy set barbican, there are two large towers on either side joining with the wall itself. Each of them has dark arrow slits uh, on on the face of them. Um, there's a raised portcullis uh, that that uh, sort of shadows the entrance to this pathway that leads under this massive arch, and the archway leads forwards for you know 80, 100 feet, something like that. This is very clearly the entrance to the walls of the palace compound of Ayer. Um, Aya, not, not Aya, but Ankara and Sarek, you can see a little ways forwards in the center of the path. Um, there's a dead body lying in the center of the path with a spear driven down in its back. And the body glows with a bright blue glow emanating from a point on its back, a small blue sphere of refreshing and cooling light. Um, there are two deep pits dug in the center of this path. And uh, it looks like they maybe were covered at one point and then now have been uncovered. Um, so let me see here. The, the pits leave 10 feet on either side. So it's very easy to walk around them. But like, you know, if you were like an invading army or something like that, trying to march an entire army through here, they would be the sort of thing that would probably trip you up. Uh, and then finally, yeah, there are um, Sarek and uh, Ankara, you see sturdy iron doors in the center of both the left and the right walls. 
So Armoros is is leading the way, but uh, is effectively the blind here in this in this particular circumstance. Um, what what do the four of you make of this? Yeah, Sark is behind Armoros, just like maybe if you just slow down, if you uh, take a moment, and there's stuff ahead, and it's very uh, excuse me, and just like trying to get him to stop. Yeah. I'll stop. I look. I like turn and look down at him. Uh, well, sir. There's, um, apparently bodies and pits and, uh, loot, perhaps? And he turns back to Aya. He's like, I, ahead, and, uh, the word trap rings a bell, and I just, I'm, I'm worried for you. Yes, those towers over there would be the perfect ambush point. We should probably Not take one of the towers. Anything. That as well. So what is our plan? And he looks back at I and like sneers and he looks back at Armos is like leader. I shall kick in one of the doors. We'll kill everyone inside of it and then see from the tower. Uh, Armos- I agree. This is a good idea. Sarek like looks back and like looks at the two of them and just steps backwards. He's like, all right. I'm going to go try to kick the door open, Steven. Yeah. So just to paint the picture for you now that I have you over here. In the center here, there's this this body with this blue glow on top of it. And then on the left and on the right, uh, in the center here, there are these doors. So, uh, Armoros, go ahead and move yourself to where you want to be. Okay. Well, he, like, starts to walk towards this left door, sees the glowing blue body. Mm Mm-hmm. And then it becomes a 50-50 situation. So on a on a one, he's going to investigate the body. And he does. Oh, yeah. Damn. Uh, and the rest of you, what are you three doing as you see Armoros move forwards? I'm going to move forward as well. And I'm going to look and look down into the pit and just make sure there's nothing in there. Cool. I'm assuming it's just a physical barrier, but I just want to look over the edge just in case. Follow Armoros to the body. Yeah, awesome. Sarah's just in the back, like, of course, this is, of course, this is what we're doing, and just like hobbles his way after them, and uh, yeah, just ends up like sort of there. Awesome, uh, Armoros, on the back of this this body with a, a spear skewered in it, um, you see this like miniature orb. It's a small, cool orb that um, it's it's very strange. It's it's hard to describe. The surface doesn't look completely smooth. It looks um, almost like pocked or blasted in miniature. The surface shines with sort of a silver luster. So there's um, a spear in his back, and then there's also this orb sitting on his back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, let me see. Let me let me describe what this place like looks and sounds and smells. Um, the sound here is silent. It's completely still. Um, but you smell uh, a fire and something acrid and and hot smelling tangs in your nose. Well, I'm gonna pick up the orb. Okay, Armoros, you reach out and grab the orb, and then from above you, you hear a thunk, and then the gurgling of liquid, and then. Um, Frankly, uh, hot oil boiling comes pouring from a hole in the ceiling down on you. Let's see, what's that? What's the situation here? Mm-hmm. Yes, I need everybody within. Oh yeah, great. So happy I stayed back. <laughs> so let's. See. That's bait. <laughs> Everybody within this area that I've just ah! <laughs> roasted. I need you to make a DC 14 dexterity saving throw. So that's Ankara and Armoros. This this splattering boiling oil just like explodes from the sink pouring down. 20 from Armoros and a three from Ankara. Oh, no. Okay, so that is I just uh, lay down before it hits me. <laughs> Ankara's just given up. Mm. Ooh, wow. Okay, so Ankara, you take four damage, and Armoros, you take two damage. Okay. Uh, so the orb's not hurting me or anything like that? No, you grab the orb and you pick it up. Um, you can put it into your pouch. Just 
bright glowing blue orb. Well, I do, but I'm also I'm going to dash the door. I'm going to like shoulder it and go up into the room. We're pre- uh, before we move on, there, there's continued things that are happening as a consequence of your grabbing this orb. Um, let's see here. As you grab the orb, this oil pours out. There's a second gurgling sound, Sarek. You hear it, the same sort of thud, thunk, and this um, this thick sludge comes oozing out of a hole in the ceiling and then plops down on the ground a mere 10 feet away from you. It is bright red and thickly veined with dark red veins. And as it lands on the ground, it turns and begins sliming in your direction. Finally, the third and final thing that happens is that the rightmost door slams open and a guard comes rushing out of it, a guard wielding a single spear. So, would all of you please roll for initiative? Our, our fearless leader, what have you done? <laughs> I'm just gonna stay on the ground. Set up the storyline. <laughs> I forgot. Right, you're rolling really hot right now, dude. I know. I'm killing it. Killing myself. <laughs> God. I'm really, I'm, I'm, the reason for this is that I am actually quite upset about the sun going out, but I don't want to reveal that to anyone. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm a little distracted by all of my anxiety awesome. and stress about the sun. So let's see. And the oil. Listen. I was I gonna say got, burning hot oil at Armrose is I just got insane. doused with hot oil. <laughs> He's just like, eh, whatever. It did not do very much. That's for sure. Let's see. Uh-huh. So, oh, it's a dexterity roll. I think I got out of most of the way. I did like a barrel roll. Yep. While That's tucking cool. the orb into my pouch. Ten for the ooze and then the guard. Is that a plus one? Yep. That's an eight for the guard. All right. It's looking like Sarek Vesha gets the drop on everybody. Sarek, you saw this blood ooze plop to the floor next to you. Armoros, you're up mm-hmm. next. Sarek, what are you doing? Sarek just turns to the ooze and doesn't even say anything, doesn't scream, just knows this this would happen. This is, Of course, this is what happens. And just sighs and uh tries to come up with like can i he yells grenade and he jumps on top of it steven <laughs> i'm sorry do not Real do quick. that yeah um now that we've been through a second encounter at the end of that previous encounter where you used your arrows i need you to test to see if you're running low on arrows because you didn't bring more sure. than one spot. so roll 1d6 on a one or a two you're running low which means you only have one encounter's worth of arrows left Oh, yeah, you're running low. So you reach back, you realize, oh, you've only got a handful of arrows left. What do you do? Sark sighs and just looks at the others. And there is a resignation in him. But can I also um, scan the room for any, like, you said there was a fire nearby or signs of a fire? Or was that, there was something, where was that? (laughs) Or is that further away? Right. The third thing that happens is you hear this kathunk, chinga, 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 and then a slam kaboom. on both sides of this passageway. Massive iron portcullises slam down, trapping you and preventing you from either leaving or going further. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll draw those. Interesting. You didn't mention that earlier, Stephen. Where is that in the Where's that in the initiative rules? Not written anywhere here, Stephen. <laughs> That's just something you just did right now. Is that what you're saying? Just made that up. Is that what happens? Okay. I played indeed. While we're doing this, I guess both my arms turn into dragons, and yeah. I'm just going to kind of push <laughs> the portcullises aside. Oh no! Uh. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so Jesse, up to the north here, out beyond the portcullis that just slammed down, about 300 feet away down this corridor of walls, you can see faint fires burning uh, behind Ooh. large. Um, large misshapen structures. You can't really see what it is because it's pitch black. Oh, by the way, everybody, you're in the dark. So if that matters to you, make note of it. Uh, it matters not. Uh, can, so 
Is the assumption then that that the two people who cannot see in the dark cannot see what's going on? It's like it's like if it was pitch black, right? You can see like movement sure. and okay. occasional flashes of stuff, maybe the flash up of a blade, but like it's dark. Uh, yeah, Sarek is completely resigned to the fact that like they followed an idiot and they are doomed. He lets out a loud, not a battle cry, just a. <laughs> And runs at the uh, slime with his rapier out. Wow. He's going to try and stab it. Wow. I think my favorite moment of today so far is Jesse clarifying that it's not a battle cry. Yeah, just (laughs) just to be clear, it wasn't a battle cry that you heard. It was... Jesse, go ahead and move yourself where you want to be, and then you did hit... So roll your damage for that rapier strike. Eight piercing damage. Not bad at all. Not doing badly. All right, Armoros, it's your turn. And Aya, you're following up. What do you do, Armoros? Uh, so just to clarify, Stephen, do I hear or see this person coming out of yeah. the you right door? Yeah, door slam open. You see a dark shape moving uh, sort okay. of across the way. But only one, you would say, right? Yes, you, you do only see one shape. Uh, okay. And of course, uh, I think in the darkness, you're at disadvantage to attack. Yeah, I'd expect nothing less from you. I would. Uh, I'm gonna make my way over there, then stomp over and engage the dark figure. Let's see. Would you like me to roll again? Uh, yeah. Well, um, give me a, an attack roll, and I'll verify what the consequences of being in pitch black. Dark. Well, I rolled a one, Stephen. So. Oh, well, that's good. So you definitely miss because either you're rolling normally or you're rolling with disadvantage. So yeah, yeah. You, you just whip straight over this the spear guard's hand. Aya, it's your turn. And then the blood mm-hmm. ooze followed by the guard. Wait, for my second action, mm-hmm. or I'm going to pull out the orb and like drop it on the ground. Does that create enough light to see and take away the disadvantage? No, it doesn't project light, so to speak. It's like uh, a faint blue candle. Then I drop a flashbang, I suppose. I just kind of okay, cool. Yeah, you just have that, like with your dragon arms. Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> you blind yourself. Next, uh, Aya, it's your turn. Well, seeing as how Aya can't see anything, definitely heard the the door slam open. Probably didn't see the blood ooze, and here's the gates slam down. Uh, I reach into my pack, kind of like whistling, having no idea what's going on. And pull out a candle and very calmly pull out my tinder kit and i'm just sitting there like <laughs> are you lighting you're lighting a torch a candle because i have my scribes kit oh yeah nice okay so but i don't candles. have a torch mm-hmm. crap yeah let's let's see what that does i think that creates light within like five feet of you oh my god that's like nothing <laughs> it's not a lot it's not good a candle let's see um, you can carry it around like you're playing a I don't game. have a torch. All I have is a candle. I'm just okay. imagining. One hour, a candle sheds bright light in a five-foot radius and dim light for another five feet. Oh, so, so maybe I can kind of see it now. Let's see here. We're going to do aura one will be five feet, and aura two will be ten feet. Uh, and that will be like... Meanwhile, Jesse's like battling this ooze, and I'm sitting there like... <laughs> Yeah, cool. So that's that's your your light area, Aya. Um, so that's your action. Do you want to move? Um, seeing that clearly, Jesse is is uh, or sorry, Sarek is clearly uh, grappling with something. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I take a one step forward. <laughs> cool. Or yeah, this way. Just like just enough to get this ooze into the light for Sarek. Yeah, yeah. I just like cool. walk over to him to see what's going on. Nice. You see this this heaped mound of what looks like clotted blood on the ground. And as you look at it, it lashes out with a pseudopod striking at Sarek Basha. That's plus three to attack. I can see it now, though. Yeah, you can. You can. It's pseudopod strikes against Sarek's, what are you wearing, leather armor? And then it sort of splashes off, not being able to find any purchase. The spear guard thrusts forwards with his spear, striking at you, Armoros. So that's plus three. Mm-hmm. And that's at disadvantage as well. He rolled a 16. Of course, your armor class is an 18. You're, we- you're wielding your sword and shield. 
Is that true? Huh? Are you wielding your shield armor? Yeah. Shield right. right. Yeah, so this, this spear skitters across your shield. And Kara, it's your turn, followed by Uh, Yeah, so I'm going <laughs> to... I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna go over here because I can see that Armorous has no ability to see. Brit's nervous <laughs> laughter before my hand slices my hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. Um. Uh, <laughs> I imagine Tina from Bob's Burgers. Yeah. Uh, it's like pain before she even rolls. Like. Dice uh, it's like Tina. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I I think I'll try out using Produce Flame because hopefully um, that will help Armoros see. So I'm going to cast Produce Flame. Awesome. At this spear guard. So I believe that's 1d8, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, so you need to make a ranged spell attack? Yeah. So let's see, and Kara, you need to make a 1d20 plus five to oh, okay. see hit the guard. Oh, nice, a 20. Finally. So you, you get three damage on this guard. Not too bad. Okay. Uh, and um, my flame lasts for 10 minutes. So uh, I kind of blast him with the flame and then it uh, comes back to me. So I hold it up so that um, Armoros can now see what's going on. Oh, uh, hang on. So if you attack with the flame, it ends the spell. Oh, it goes out? Yes. Well, I already did it. Sorry, still dark. You did. It was bright light for a moment and then poof. Uh, good. Sorry, Can we roll Gashaw, to see if he's on fire, turn. though? Like, is the guy... Yeah. Is he his own light now? He's he's not on fire. Uh, yes, he's wearing chain mail, so you definitely did damage to him, but you did not set him on fire. Armor, uh, Sarek Basha, it's your turn, followed by Armoros. What do you do, Sarek? Uh, as Aya gets closer to, to as- Sarek, uh, what she sees is a, just for the first time, I think, ever a, a half-elf, the grace of an elf, stabbing wildly at a sticky piece of, just like, just like, <laughs> that sound. Just like, just like, just wildly stabbing with no seem, seeming skill or really any sort of tactic. It's all just yes. random, just trying to murder this thing because he assumes they're all dead. Nice. Yeah. Just panic stabs. Oh yeah, no, those panic stabs, not good. Do you try to move away, Sark? Uh yeah, Sark sees that it's not doing any good and just like is like, okay, and just sort of like yeah. backs away from it all. Go ahead and move yourself where you want to be. Buddy. The creature lashes out at you with a pseudopod as you leave. Striking you with a 20. Rude. Let's see, how much damage is that? A, r- a Rudo pod. <laughs> <laughs> Deals you five damage, Sark. Yeah, Sark tries oh, to back off. He looks over at Aya, he's just like, ah, and then just gets blocked. Just knocked right down. Just boom, down. <laughs> Uh, sorry, you. I would ask you to make a uh, DC 11 dexterity save, but you're unconscious. You can't make it. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm down. I just so you, um, Aya. You see this pseudopod like whack Sarek on the back of his head as he turns and runs away. Yeah. Sarek just face plants in the sand of the promenade, just bluff, and the pseudopod just like leeches onto and then into his skin. You can see it there. Um, <laughs> Armoros, it's your turn. Wait, and then so if I, I hit it, would I be hitting him? Uh, no, there's a pseudopod oh. that stretches between the blood ooze and Sarek. Oh. Armoros, that 26. Actually, wait, you're in the dark, so it was only a 20? Only a 20. Only a 20. So go ahead and roll your damage. Eight damage. Uh, I think that's actually 11. It would be 11 plus 8 if you had crit. Oh, right. The damage is not a disadvantage, right? So damage. Yep. So uh, you kill him. You kill this guard just straight up outright. <laughs> 
<laughs> dead, gone. <laughs> And Karo, awesome. it's your light that allowed me to do that. Aya, it's your turn, and then the blood ooze. What do you do? This is a moment I've been waiting for. Like, just like I wanted it to happen at some point during the campaign, and it's happening now in episode two. I take my candle and I put it on top of the skull, just like the occultist from Darkest Dungeon. Yes. Well done. Yes. All right. So <laughs> I was well just waiting this entire time, and now it's happening. So. So needing uh, use of both of my hands, I, I I pull from yeah, I just plop it right on top, and you know obviously use some of the wax to 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 stick it on there. Yeah. Yes. And um, uh, uh I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to save Sarek. Um, so I then uh, conjure up my powers, and you hear uh the 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 my mouth contort as I uh, speak in a thousand different nameless tongues, and uh, I send an Eldritch blast at this strange blob. Fantastic. Okay, so because you are within five feet of an enemy, your ranged attacks are at disadvantage. Mm. So you get that 14 instead of that 23. Still, you hit. Mm -hmm. Roll your damage. Nine. You're really rolling those nines on force damage. Not bad. It is the blood ooze's turn. No! Sarek. You're dead. Oh, shit. So you take four damage. <clears throat> because this pseudopod is like draining blood out of your out of the back of your neck. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, Aya, you see this blood ooze reconstitute some of itself. Is that a me? Is that a me ooze now? Is that a uh, ooze made of me? It's made of you. Uh, sorry, you need to mark one failed death saving throw down. Okay, Aya. This blood ooze strikes out at you with the mm -hmm. pseudopod as well. Ooh, rolling terribly, rolling a five. So you're fine. And Kara, um, you can see all of this going down in the shadowy glare of the candle that Aya has perched on top of her, her skull. What do you do? Uh, yeah, I'm going to come over here. So I can... But just for the rules always in chat, um, normally any hits on an unconscious character are critical hits, but this is a weird thing because he's just siphoning blood out of him, so I'm not judging that as a critical hit, and so instead of taking two death saving throws, Sark's only taking one. It's still real bad, y'all. And Kara, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm going to come around here, and how, what's, how far back do I need to be with my short bow for it not to be like a giant? You simply mess. need to be more than five feet away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right here is fine. Right yeah. there is fine. Okay, so I'll just uh, shoot my short bow at it. Oh, that crit! Nice! Yeah! Woo! Britt oh, got a good roll! Way to go, Britt! Woohoo! You're the best! 11. Ooh, 11 piercing damage. All right, so uh, your your arrow skewers straight into the heart of this blood ooze, hitting some chunky object inside of it, and the whole thing goes And I go... And dissolves onto the sandy ground. And I look over at Sarek, and I'm like, God damn it! <laughs> Can't see that I've succeeded. <laughs> he is face nice. down. He is face <laughs> down. There's no possible way he would ever I, have like, seen that. Rolled around that uh, that that ditch and like shot with my short bow and it like hit it really hard. Oh, like, it was ah! slow mo too. It was like a yeah. slow. You, it's almost like you drifted. You drifted around the. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. Didn't see it. Sorry. Yeah, I look over and I'm like, oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> that's my turn. Awesome. All right, we're out of combat order, so. Uh, Y'all can take the, the rest of the 10 minutes and pick, um, pick I want to poke the ooze. You want to poke the it's ooze. It's fascinating. I want to take a sample and look at it and poke it with my stick in a scientific you know, fashion, though. That's great. That's just great. I'm glad that you are doing that. So hang on. What? what no. Eric will be no. fine. While she's doing that, by the way, because we got traps dropped on us from above, I'm going to go through the door that the guy was in. I'm yeah. using the orb as like a some form of a light source, or is that not okay with you? No, the orb doesn't give enough light to be a light source. It's it's enough light to like uh, catch your eye, and then it's I, enough light to be seen clearly, but it's not I it's am? not like a candle sized strength. Let's see. What is my bag? Clock. So I'll let's help see. Sorry, not be dead anymore. Have that down uh, at the end of this 
10 minute segment, um, the sun comes back to life, turning back on. Oh, nice. As I said, every day. Hasn't been a day. <laughs> it's the sun is the day. Am I good? Do I do I yeah. wake up? Sorry, you yeah. are brought back up with one hit point. You look like shit. You've been sorry. It's been a rut. Like, it's almost it feels... as if you did LA traffic and dropped a coffee on your lap. It's sure. You yeah, almost as bad. Sorry, like feels the back of his neck, and there's like goop, and yes. like, looks around, and it's daylight now, and it's yes. just like, what, what, what happened? What time is it? What, what, what? I'm still poking the goo. We're in the bubble, man. I don't know what time it is, <laughs> but you haven't been out for very long. Just a, just a minute or two. The sun just came back. What? What happened to me? What? What is this? I, he like holds out the goo in his hand. He's like, "Was that on me?" I was like, "Keep that." Actually, yeah. Can you keep that for me? And she like starts reaching into her robes for like some kind of vial, desperately looking for something, but she has nothing. He like holds his hand upside down. His goop starts to like drip from it, and he's like, "Oh, no, save that! Save that!" I mean, half of that's your blood anyway, so you probably want to keep that just in case for later. It's my. And he like looks at the blob. He's like, "That's me." It's a well, little bit of you. Can I yeah. have some of your blood? Just like a small amount of your blood. What? I I'm gonna poke your blood because I feel like there's I'm just something... gonna take a little piece with blood and uh, just put it in my pouch. Sarek is just dumbfounded, and like, just people are clearly working on him, taking goo, and he's just like. <laughs> The world is a blur right now. Can I see what hard object was in the middle of the goopy? <laughs> yeah, it's it's sort of a, like a, a lump of stitched together flesh. Ooh. I wish I could. I want to learn how to do that. How do I do that? That was kind of cool. I, and I mutter as I like poke at the flesh and kind of just like I mutter to myself. And somebody else that you can't see. Oh, that's kind of cool. We should probably learn how to do that. I mean, I could get some skin. I could probably stitch that together. It sucks blood and stuff. That's kind of neat. I'm saying. And then I just kind of mutter and continue muttering and walk. This goes on for a while. Yeah. 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 I'm going to loot the body real quick, Steve. Yeah. Uh, combined from both the ooze and the guard, <laughs> you gain a total of 13 gold pieces. I will keep four. And then you guys all get three. Thanks. What did we do with the seven we had from before? I gave you two of that. Yeah, we each got two. That's the relevant information. Nice. I tucked it into your unconscious little little chest pocket. Thank you. Now, Sarek. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. I don't think you've spent your hit dice yet. I have not. So if you took a long rest, you could recover your hit dice. Okay. Not a, not a long rest, a short rest. Sorry. Uh, short rest. Yeah. Ten minutes is all. Sarek is uh, not thinking about that. He is focused on the fact that that fire in the distance was like a thing that he was going to use to defeat this slime, and it, mm. and and he could not. So now he's obsessed with like. Just well, let me help a, you, Jesse. Your characters moment. are staring off, thinking about fire. Armros comes over to where you're like leaning up against your staff and says, "You look like absolute shit. You need to take a break." What? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You're not fine. Everything's it's fine. It's, it's not. Look, I'm I'm made of slime now. <laughs> you are made of slimy shit. You need to rest. What? It's for the better of the group that you rest. We're going to rest here, and he like points around to the dead body. And the Orby body and the slime thing and the portcullis shut. He's like, this is the place I'm supposed to rest. Armros is like kind of had enough. So I'm going to take, he takes one of his hands, puts it like at the calves of Sarek and sweeps yeah. and pushes his chest down onto the ground. Sarek, Sarek. you just let Armros like sit you down. 
oh yeah, Sarek's in no position to fight back. And he just like looks at Ankara and Aya just like, for real, this is what we're doing? Do you wear a hat or anything? No. I did and have he... like a hood up, but it's clearly off and gone now because I just got my neck sucked on. So I'm. He, he literally just puts his hand over your eyes and goes and like leans in real close like, you need to sleep, you whiny little man. Just sleep. <laughs> But I, like he's as as you tell him, he's like, no, I just give me five. I, I can, it's right there, and then we can, and then we. He kind of sits up, looks down at him, looks back at the group, and says, "He'll need about ten minutes. We should keep <laughs> exactly ten minutes is what he will need." All right, good. Let's do this. Okay. All right, folks. Ten minutes pass. Sarek, you can go ahead and spend your hit dice. Remember to go ahead and deduct one from the, the big box. Nice. You regain eight hit points, so you're back to full. Good. Nice. <laughs> I used mine earlier, so I don't get to do anything. Yeah. Correct. I still have my second win. You do. All right, folks. Uh, at the end of the 10 minutes, the earth beneath your feet starts rumbling and groaning. And feel it shaking underneath you. And a giant treasure chest comes up out of the ground. <laughs> yeah, totally. Sarek like pops up as the earth shakes, and he's like, "What happened? What did I go to sleep? What happened?" And he looks at it <laughs> like Amorosi's He's like, "You did this." He's he just kind of like is like looking at the earth shaking and stuff. Yeah. Same. I'm, like looking around, kind of confused because I thought we set off all the traps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can see in the distance, sort of up to the north, now that you can see along this path, far in the distance, you know, 300 feet or so. Um, let me describe what you see. Yeah, uh, the, the path exits out the other side of the Barbican, through, of course, this, this heavy iron portcullis now, um, towards what looks like a flagpole with a drifting pennant hanging down from the top of it, with a makeshift barricade built up around it. You can see some faint figures moving about with torches, uh, the dry smoke of a, a, of a cook fire uh, drifting up above this construction. Um, at, if you look up into the sky as you examine sort of your environs, you can see the sun itself, sort of um, the upper right and lower left corners are sort of bleeding out into two twin tails that are dissolving out into the void of the sky. The sun is quite beautiful today. We are thankful to have it. He just says, kind of looking at it ponderously. I think we should keep moving. Yes, we should advance the storyline significantly further if we can. <laughs> Zerk hold like hangs back, drawing what he sees in the sky. So yeah, once again, the, the left-hand door over here is closed. The right-hand door stands ajar, um, open on a narrow set of stairs that are leading upwards into the building to your right. Uh, we do. So? I'll lead the way. Yes, cool. you are the leader. And he glares at Aya again. Yeah, very nice. All right, so um, you, you step into this stairwell, uh, Armoros. Would the four of you sort of position yourselves following Armoros sort of in order? Who's second? I think I would probably be. Cool. All right, excellent. Uh, so Armoros, you head upstairs. Uh, it's pretty dim in here, but Aya, uh, since you still have your candle out, you're still shedding bright light. Um, within the radius that Armour is standing in. And uh, the stairwell leads up into a large and spacious room. Um, it's dark once you finally get into the room, so the candle is the only source of light that you have. Um, you hear, as you pause, whispers echoing as if they're coming from down a hall. Um, you're hearing sort of back to your right, you're hearing this, I thought you could sneak past us, did you? We have uses for little snots like you. Um, and in here, you can smell this fainter, acrid, hot oil smell that you recognize from the boiling oil that got poured down on you. Um, in the room, 
immediately around you, you see uh, in the center of the room, a table surrounded by chairs. There's um, an abandoned card game and a stack of gold pieces scattered around on the tabletop. Um, far against the right wall, you see the heavy humped shape of what looks like some sort of sculpture or altar. And again, it's dark. You can't see outside of the radius of this dim candle. Um, uh, you, you can hear from the back right corner this, this sound, these whispered words. And on the left wall, you see some sort of uh, large ornate carving. Um, before Armoros goes in, can I just say, is it dark in there? Do you need a torch? Is it dark in there, Stephen? It is dark. Yeah. There. Yeah. A torch I, I you should produce some, some light. I have some torches. So We're behind the door, you said, right, Stephen? Uh, yeah, you've, you've come up the stairs into the room now. And we hear them talking is what you said, right? Yeah, you're in the room and you hear this this whispered conversation from off to your right echoing as if it's from down a hallway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the moment I've been waiting for. I'm going to kick in this door, create that light. We'll kill all of them. I hand this, the torch. There's no door right in front of you, Armrose. Yeah. You're in the middle of the room. Where are we hearing the voices from? You're hearing them back off to the back right of behind you. Somewhere in this room, there's maybe some sort of hallway that's refracting these voices. Okay. You understand my mind's eye is having a tough time conceptualizing your, your weird ass shit. You know, that's you. <laughs> Maybe once you light a torch, you will understand better about the uh, structure of the space. Mm -hmm. Light the light and I'll kill whoever's whispering. There's, p wait, whisp wait, you can hear that? <laughs> Normally it's just me. Yes. The more oh. we talk, the more that they know we're here. Light the light oh. so that you slay this person in the room. Wait, are you sure you can hear that? We can all hear it. Oh. oh, can we? Or is it just arm rows? Yeah, you can all hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah, no, we should kill them. Yeah, we're just waiting for the light. What are you and hearing? Any what? <laughs> what? My car, do you light a torch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what I about that it. torch? Yeah, I don't All know. Right. What are you hearing? Why? Give me that torch. What are you? You pull out a torch and light it, and reveal clearly. There's a table and chairs sitting in the middle of the room that you're standing very near. Immediately behind you is the set of stairs that you came up to enter the room. On the far right wall, there's a dark bronze sculpture of a standing orb with radiant lines around it, and in the back right corner. So you're, you're sort of exited out these stairs and sort of in the center of the mm -hmm. room, but the stairs head back towards the back wall, which is about 15 feet behind you. Mm -hmm. Back in the back right corner, there's a curved dark stairwell that descends downwards, and you're hearing these echoed voices rising up this stairwell. On the left wall, you can see a large stone fireplace mm -hmm. with a draconic head carved over the mantle with glittering eyes and an open mouth revealing mm -hmm. dirty things. What do you do? Glittering eyes, you said? Glittering eyes. I'm going to take also, my orb. There's, there's gold pieces on the table. Yeah, I'm going to take my ornate dagger and try to dig out the glittering eyes. Cool. What? No, you probably... don't. Please don't do that. Sir, we'll need money later. What? Almost no, certainly we will. Uh, uh, Sarek, like, shows his coin purse and he just shakes. He's like, I've gotten more money and I'm not even sure how. We're fine. <laughs> Sir, you have to trust me on this. I've been out in the battlefield before. We'll no, need you, this. Last time we trusted you, you picked up an orb, and I got covered in slime that became me. I'm not. This is not acceptable. This is you unacceptable. Can't trust me with your weakness, I was only able to lead us into our foe. That's what I do. That's I what? and Ankara, while Sarek and Armoros are arguing over near the the the, the fireplace. I was gonna and say, and I'm digging out the eyes. Uh, yeah. I, I'd love to just roll perception. Cool. Yeah, um, you know, like you can you can clearly hear the sound of this this voice from down below. Yes, we have ways of treating people like you, don't we? We know just how to manage you, you little scab, worthless. But we'll make use of you. Yes, we know just what to do with you. We have the perfect plan in place for little snots like you. This voice is just like continuing on and on, just like an endless rant from down the stairwell. Um, other than that, the, the room is as I've described it. Mm -hmm. um, 
there, the, the, there's 18 gold pieces on the table. The orb on the right-hand wall is standing tall on radiant lines that are holding it like a tripod. And the surface of the orb is cracked and veined. The interior bottom of the orb is clearly holding some sort of substance. Do we hear, yes. do I hear the voices? I know they did because they did a perception check, but do I hear the voices? So like you can hear the whispering, but you don't, you don't understand the words the way that uh, Ankara does. Everyone that's not Sarah. Should I go upstairs or downstairs? It's unclear with Steven and kill yeah, that. Yeah, the, the stairs down, there's a, a spiral staircase down that leads to where the, the voice is coming from. I would like to say I'm laying claim on the glittering eyes of that dragon, but I, I would like to... Just be quiet. We should probably... The eyes of the dragon are fucking mine. Out of here. If we wait for Sarek's indecision, we will die of old age. I'm going to go. Armoros, as you are trying to pry the eyes out of this head, yeah. um, it's it's very difficult. You can't really get any purchase with your dagger. It seems like maybe they're larger inside the sockets than the space revealed by the sockets. So like, short of like destroying the head, which would take a, a pretty serious feat of strength um, and also yeah. 10 minutes. Um, you also, probably challenge accepted. <laughs> no, no. However, no. Armoros, as as you continue trying to pry the eyes out of the head, you notice that they they wiggle a little bit and can be pushed in. I push them in. Yeah, I'm, I'm thumbing. No, them. no, please don't. Please, this is the worst idea. Don't mess with those. Yeah, no okay, indecision. I'm just doing it. Yeah, he's... you push them in, and and nothing happens. Sarek braces for the world to end. Just Are like anything's uh, gone. Sorry, what was that, Jeff? The sh they're just pushed into the skull. And they're gone now. They're not. They're not gone. They they're like resistant, like buttons or something. You know, like if you mm. take off your thumbs, they pop back out. If you push them, they pop back in. Yeah. Okay. He kind of looks a little bit disappointed, and then says, "I will return to this, but I'm going to go eliminate the source of these voices." And he walks off. Okay. I'm gonna kind of like try to look down because they're downstairs, right? Yes. I'm gonna try to like look down the stairs or like maybe even come down a couple of steps quietly mm -hmm. to see what I can see. Yeah, are you uh, stealthing your way down? Yeah, uh, yes. Go ahead and roll a stealth check. Uh, uh, yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, you're walking down the stairs. Um, and uh, with a you, giant glittering skull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with his giant glittering skull with a candle on top of it, by the way. Uh, and as you step down the last turn of the stairs, you hear this whispering voice shout, boom. <laughs> um, and it, it shocks you and you let out like a, a, a sharp yelp or something like that. Uh -huh. And then you realize that like the person who is speaking is still some distance away from you, did not say boo and isn't looking at you, but then stops their endless tirade and turns to face you. So uh, what you see in here, again, it's quite dark, so you can only sort of very vaguely make out this shape of this, um, this large person standing in front of uh, the bars of a cell. In the center of the room, there's a brazier burning with low coals, and this, this person is holding this massive, like, club-looking thing. The smells in here just like assault your nose. It smells like rot and awful and burnt hair and flesh. Um, you see like a handful of empty cells, some low uh, sort of like wooden torture implement sort of structures. There's this brazier in the middle of the room. I think that's really all you can see here. This, this person turns to you is wearing a heavy leather hood and is holding this massive uh, chunk of, of, of material like a club. Uh, and was speaking to the person behind the bars, but now has turned to face you. So I'm sorry, I'm unclear. Did she enter first or is she behind me or what? Yes, she headed down while you were walking across mm -hmm. the room because you were messing with the skull. She headed down, stealthing her way down the stairs to see what she could see. Mm -hmm. Aya, I need you to roll for initiative. Okay. That makes sense. But I didn't here. anticipate to fail my stealth check quite so horrendously, but that's okay. So dramatically. Mm -hmm. Well. Mm. 
Such cute sounds. I know. I love a snoring. That's so cute. 21. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's... He dragged his little bed behind my chair and is now asleep. So, yeah, we'll do that. So the jailer runs across the room towards you, Aya, and then brings what you can now see is this massive chunk of iron rebar down in your direction. Just like Damn, that's that. some loud rebar. Oh, boy. Let's see. Mm -hmm. That's. He charges at me like a train. Yeah, the, the piece of iron rebar that he's wielding is basically like a train track. So, yeah, you, you hear him coming, like, chugga, 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 chugga. Yeah. And then he just, like, slams it into your chest. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, dealing you 14 damage. Yeah. How much life do you have? You have eight. You're not dead. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, uh, yeah you're, you're down. Aya, yeah. it's your turn. Would you make a death saving throw for me, please? Yes, I would love to. Excellent. Okay, all right, you're not dead. Uh, Armoros, I'm gonna say you come down the stairs now. Yeah. And you see the, the shattered body of Aya lying on the steps at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. What do you do? I do what Armoros always does. Do you want me to roll initiative? So yes, point. I do, that's fantastic. Um, good, so uh, you come down around the bottom of the steps, but the jailer has the advantage on you. Missing you entirely. It's your turn. You're at the bottom of these spiral stairs, facing yeah. the trailer, wearing this heavy leather hood, wielding this massive heavy iron rebar. He sees his quite complimentary friend in distress and is very, he like looks down at her, looks up at him and jaw clenches and he rolls 11. Not good enough, probably. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, unfortunately not. Hang on, let me bring out a quick uh, token to represent this character. Ooh, maybe I can use like something something dire mm -hmm. yeah we'll use this one and i just stay engaged with them i'm not going to back off or anything like that, obviously yeah that sounds great for Let's... future reference <laughs> you can't take reactions when you're dead can you no no mm -hmm. but you can take a reaction as a response to getting hit if the hit like, doesn't kill out. you yeah no even if the hit kills you you can still take your reaction really yep Oh, I should have. Should have. All right, cool. Have, so, have. okay. Uh, Ankara, Sarek, what are you two doing? Are you running down in, following Armoros? So, did we hear all of this happening? Oh, like, yeah. Heard? This was loud. Uh, I mean, well, first of all, did anyone grab that gold on the table? Did Armoros get that? Uh, oh. All right. Well, I just put that in my bag. You just scoop um, up 18 gold pieces, put them in your bag. All right, yeah, you got I'll it. share them with everyone later. Cool. Um, That's so then, nice of you. You could just take them. I, as a very old elf druid, I don't really care about money that much, um, but I know some people do. So I like I like making friends with gold that I don't care about. <laughs> and uh, then so wholesome. I look. So I guess when we hear all of this, I just look at Sarek like. We should, we should go down there, right? Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't need, we don't need to go down there. But you heard all of that. Yes, right? and I also watched you take those coins first. So our priorities are different from theirs. I'm just no, I was doing out. that while that was happening. Oh yes, certainly. But, <laughs> but before I heard all of the death sounds, I feel. Dick, oh. Come on. I just kind of try to grab him. I'm like, we have to go save our friends. We're not going to, what are we going to live through this on our own? They're the only reasons we're going to survive at all. So we need to make sure we don't lose them. Like, like a petulant child being dragged to go grow, like clothes shopping. I'm just being like scooted across the ground through the doorway. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. Then, Would the two of you roll initiative, please? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So we'll bring this guy back up. All right, cool. So um, let's see. It was Jailer Armros Aya. I need you to make a death saving throw. 
Oh, right. Mm-hmm. That's a second success. And Kara, uh, oh no, actually it's Sarek first and then Ankara. So Sarek, it's your turn. You come down the staircases being dragged by Ankara and you are the first to see uh, a view over the shoulder of Armros to this jailer wielding this massive iron rebar. Uh, <laughs> Sarek looks at it and then looks sort of back up the, is Ankara behind me? Yes. No, and Kara's, I think, in front of you, dragging Oh, you. right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, Sarek, like, panics and sort of backs up through the, the, the doorway again of the stairs and uh, uh, runs back upstairs. Okay, cool. Sarek runs back upstairs. And Kara, what do you do? Sarek, come back. God, zoop, right up the stairs again. Well... So this is this is the little guy in the purple, right? That's my guy. Yes. All right. Yep. Well, I guess I'm just gonna. I mean, he sees me, right? He knows I'm there. He does. I'm You're on the other side of armor. Just shoot my short bow at him. Awesome. Does she get advantage since uh, the guy's engaged? No. She simply doesn't get disadvantage because she's not engaged. Yeah, your arrow goes flying wide, and then the jailer takes a heavy-handed swing at Armos. Ooh, hitting you for 16 damage, Armoros. Oh, well, that drops me. Uh, and it's your turn, and I need you to make a death saving throw. How did our tank get dropped in one hit? <laughs> An 11? Okay, you're not. I rolled two off of max damage. That's, yeah. one, that's one, uh, one success. Mm -hmm. Aya, I need you to make a, a third death saving throw. An 11, all right, Aya, you are stabilized. You're unconscious for the rest of the fight, but you're not going to die. Sarek, you're upstairs. You're in this hallway with these two portcullises at the left and the right. There's a door in front of you, these two pits. There's that corpse and like the, the blood ooze smear on the ground to your left. What do you do? Yeah, well, the door across from you has a handle. Okay. You're gonna yeah. pull more. This is like when you went from one and you you're like in a wow. Oh no, I was I was muted for some more. reason. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm running up the stairs. Just recap, running up yeah. the stairs, and I in front of me I see the doorway for the other door across the sandy. Uh, room and I'm just gonna like run towards it and try to open it so whatever yes. happens you're all right pull more whelps you're gonna pull more whelps no more... no no whelps I'm also just Sarek. out loud screaming at Sarek from the bottom of the stairs roll oh, an wait. athletics yeah. check yeah Sarek hears you ignores you <laughs> uh just straight up athletics Athletics, 14, all right, you slam your shoulder into the door and it doesn't open because it doesn't open inwards. It opens outwards, Sarek. So you pull on the handle and you can feel that the door would open. It's not locked, but it feels like it's barred from the other side. And Kara, what do you do? I just shoot my shirt bow again while all continuously right. screaming for Sarek to get back here. Go for it. Oh yeah, you're short. Your arrow flies I'm wide. Busy. I'm I'm so upset. Right just now. run. Do just you, leave us. Do you grit. move? Do you grit. run? Just leave. I. <sighs> I don't know what to do now. <laughs> you guys are dead. I mean, they're not dead, right? I can tell that they're just like they're, they're still breathing. The ground. Yep. I'm not gonna leave them behind. I mean, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna back up a little bit up the staircase. Okay, you back a little just bit. A, just a little bit. Just around, tiny bit, tiny you said bit. it's like a spiral, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a spiral. So as soon as it, like, I see it missing, I just kind of like <laughs> step back around the corner. Yeah. All right, yeah, you step back around the corner and then you hear the heavy footfalls of the jailer stomping up the stairs. You see the heavy blunt end of this iron 
uh, shaft before he before he comes around the corner, and then he raises it high over his head, and he smiles at you and says, "Naughty!" And then he brings it down. Unfortunately, the tight space messes up his swing, and it clangs against the side of the walls, sparing you. Armros, I need a death saving throw, sir. All right, you have a second to success. Sarek, what do you do? This door is not opening for you. Sure. Um, Is there anything that I can see? Can I uh, use some sort of perception or investigate to try and open the northern Pecolis using maybe thieves <laughs> tools or something? This, I'm trying to figure out a way out. I just want out. <laughs> You're like fumbling with your thieves tools in front of these massive iron bars that set into the ground and into the stone walls on yes. either side of you. Uh, your thieves tools are ineffective. And Kara, what do you do? You're face to face with this jailer. His eyes are these black pools of darkness. His face skin you can see is, is all burned uh, and healed. I think uh, he's still standing over me, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say, no, you're naughty. And then I'm going to stab him with my dagger. Nice. <laughs> nice. You hit. <laughs> Roll your damage. Okay. <laughs> Four damage. The, the maximum amount that you could possibly hope to deal with a dagger. <laughs> your, your dagger scores the, the skin of his arm. And he says, he says, I'm going to throw you in my jail. Oh man, he is rolling terribly. Armros, I need a third death save. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Armros, you also have stabilized yourself. You don't wake up, but you're not dead. Sarek, man, there's nothing to do here. You're trapped. You're like a rat in a cage. There's no way out. There's no way forwards. There's no way back. The door is locked. The portcullises are down. Are you going to try to lift them? I don't know. Let's find No. Uh, Sarek thinks back to, he's like, clearly in his mind, clearly there's got to be a way out of this situation. And he, he runs back to the room with the dragon, like, pokey yes. eyeballs and yes. starts, like, poking at the eyeballs because yes. maybe maybe he was onto something. <laughs> Maybe he was right, and that's the way to do it. This clearly, clearly, he's so smart. That man, that that dumb ape is so smart. He just, like, keeps poking at them, trying to, like, find a pattern. Sorry, yeah. roll a perception test with disadvantage. Game of Overwatch or CSGO where there's that one jackass that just sits on the, in the team game in the corner and ruins the experience. <laughs> it's that's just like Jesse. Jesse, Jesse is that guy right now. Yeah, Jesse, you're just like... I okay, would go down on you and ask. Yeah. You're just panicking. Yeah, oh, full panic mode. And Kara, what do you do? Sarek! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, hmm. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, I, oh, God. Listen, oh man, I have no acrobatics or athletics abilities. Uh, I did I hurt him at all? I mean, yeah, you dealt four damage. Four to him. damage. Yeah, I'm just like still, I'm still <laughs> stabbing him. Just He's to got the bloodlust. I want him to back up enough so that I can like shoot him with my short bow again, or like thorn whip him, or at least run down and try to like help. Yeah, no, he's he's totally not gonna back up. Do I have advantage because we're in a tiny stairwell? No. <laughs> Good try. Oh my God. I can't even run away now because he's right there. I'm just going to wait to die. That's my turn. <laughs> You're just going to wait? You just sink to your knees I mean, in despair? Well, I i mean, I took my dagger out. And I tried to get him again and I missed because I my foot slipped on the step. Oh, is that I'm, nine from your dagger? Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, he finally hits you. Yeah. Oh, no. He only dealt you six damage, which is Oh, nothing. well, guess what, Stephen? Guess how <laughs> many hit points I have right now. Sorry, you're, you're like frantically shoving your thumbs into the eye sockets of this dragon head over the mantle of this fireplace, and you hear this stomp. 
stomp, stomp. <laughs> and from behind you, over the over your shoulder, we see the heavy iron bar, just like coated in gore, come up out of the staircase. And the jailer stands at the top of the bar, turns and looks at you and says, Naughty. What, what do you do, Sarek? <laughs> Uh, Sark backs in, in like the corner. He's like, "No, uh, I, <laughs> she, she took your coins!" And he like fires an arrow at him. Nice, yeah, good. Oh yeah, you you whiff wildly as the jailer strides boldly across the room. And Kara, roll a death saving throw, please. And then, oh my god. All right, Ankara, you, you rolled a 13, so you're not dead yet. Um, he rolls a 20. You, you got a critical hit, so you take 22 damage. <laughs> Sarek. Which, let me tell you, Sarek Basha, his iron rebar cleaves down through your skull, past your spinal column, and leaves a smear of Sarek on the ground. You are instantly slain. You deserve it. <laughs> yeah, you deserve every single. There's point never a more deserved game. death. <laughs> Coward. And then, where well, the camera stays in this room with the smear of Sarek in the corner near the fireplace, near this this bronze sculpture in the corner, it looks over at the staircase leading down as the jailer goes back and stomps down the stairs. Yes, we know just what to do with you. We have plans for little snots like you. And then his voice stops, and you hear from up the staircase the first, <laughs> and then the second, <laughs> as everybody else is killed by the jailer. When you open your well, eyes. Well, maybe he should call himself the executioner instead <laughs> yeah. of the jailer. Yeah, he didn't put any of us he in jail. Didn't put any of us he in had jail. all of those open cells. He just <laughs> killed us all. Yeah. We'll 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 do a quick uh outro and sign off after I after I talk to you just a very little bit about what you see now. When you open your eyes, up high above you, the sun out of time drifts overhead. It is white and yellow and red. It is small and large and bloated, taking up a quarter of the sky all at the same time. Next to it in the distance, you see a vision of a blue and green planet swimming in the black void. Lush greenery cushions you under your back. Soft grasses, hyacinths, roses, snowbells, and more. As you look around, you rest in the center of three prominent features, a tall white tower of marble with doors of pearl and stained glass windows, a placid lake sparkling blue under the rays of the sun and a great oak tree, hoary and overgrown with ivy with a large hollow just out beyond head height. A woman steps forwards, stepping gently towards you over the grasses. She has pale iridescent skin she is large and soft and is wearing a pale gray peplos which is like that draped grecian gown you often see on urns or in uh, statuary she has a round face with sparkling gold eyes and soft pastel pink hair in close grecian ringlets around her face crowned with a wreath of night blooming jasmine she smiles at you and she says welcome it's so good to see you. I do hope you ret will return often. I am a saloon. And that I think is where we will end our show for today. And I know that uh, some of us have to run off fairly quickly. So why don't I toss it over to Aya. Jasmine, why don't you oh. give us a shout out for yourself? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself where people can find you. Yeah, hello, hi, I'm that bronze girl, um, currently dead. Uh, via rebar to the chest and face. Um, I am a full-time caster on Twitch and I'm a part of a lot of different role play shows. That's exactly what I'm doing after this. I'm going to another role play show because I double fist role play the way I double Oof. fist coffee. I oh. That sentence could have gone someplace else. Um, <clears throat> you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at that bronze girl. 
Awesome. Jesse, why don't you take it from here? What? Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, hi, everyone. We all died? Question mark? Anyway, let's go around and give everyone the shout outs that they deserve for putting up with my nonsense. Uh, let's start uh, the other way this time. Britt, tell us about what's going on with you this week. Uh, yeah. Hey, guys. It's me, Britt Wiseman. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm just working on TwitchCon this week, so probably won't be streaming anymore this week. Maybe on Sunday morning. So I'll tweet about it. My Twitter is Britt Wiseman, and my Twitch is Cheerhex, and I died on the stairs, and I'm, I'm ready to die many more times. Thanks so much, Steven, and Sarek, fuck you. Next! <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Wow. Well, you know what? Uh, I feel like you don't you don't know my motivations. You don't know me. You don't know me. Um Steven, what is going on with you this week? Hello everybody. This was awesome. Super great and like y'all move fast through that stuff. Well done. A uh, slightly shorter episode today, but y'all y'all kept with it. Very awesome. I loved it. Um I mostly just work you should follow me on Twitter so you can keep up with all things The Sunfall Cycle. We got some really awesome um, fan art last week, uh, Buttopian, at Buttopian, and at uh, Uber Caragor both tweeted out some awesome fan art. So you can find both of those on my Twitter profile, at Silent Osiris, the O is a zero. And I look forward to seeing you all next week to find out what the fuck is going on, because I cannot wait for you to see. Uh, and last and definitely least, Jeff, <laughs> what's going on with you? What's up, everybody? Um, uh, what am I doing? Uh, I do another show at d d on Thursdays as well. If you follow me on Twitter, I always tweet out everything I'm doing at Control TV. Um, appreciate all the, the awesome comments on YouTube, by the way. It was really fun seeing people excited about the show and stuff like that. I do apologize, because the rest of the show is going to be Armrose killing Sarek over and over again, I guess, so... Just forever. Uh, yep. Point of order. You don't know that I left you down there. You were you were knocked out before. Oh. Point he of can, order. He knows. <laughs> he heard the shouting and, and the like. That's what's fun. Anyways. I just hope we can get out of. I'm this also not going to kill you, everybody. I was just kidding. I mean, I don't, I, I don't believe we that. can get out of this like hell dimension that we're trapped in. Sounds like fucking awful. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that description? And there's like some fucking demoness who's like keeping us down here. Well, the hell dimension was being stuck with Sarek trying to get <laughs> anything accomplished at all. But this other place sounds yeah, pretty bad Sarek. too. Yeah. It's incredibly unpleasant. Yeah. We need to get out. All right. Well, that's it for this episode. <laughs> Tune in next week where we have an entire new cast and new DM. It's, but I'll be back. <laughs> Awesome. Wait, I didn't think this through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's it for us. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we will see you next time with an all new episode. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots. We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Out of that time of video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Oh, thank God. I don't need pants now. Hey, JC. What are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a Kawashima broadcast. Yeah, now sing the music. It's a Kawashima broadcast. Bring the strippers and boats. It's a Kawashima broadcast. Now here's to ask and answer one simple question. It's a Kawashima broadcast. You got it.